how quickly time flies. It would seem that this crossover has recently debuted on the market, but in fact many years have passed, and this is quite enough to analyze all its shortcomings. At GM, they reason sensibly and practically, what prevents them from releasing two crossovers of different brands on the same platform. As a result, almost simultaneously in the fall of 2006, the Chevrolet Captiva and Opel Anthera appeared on the market. The, the German differs from its co-platform in its external and internal design, only in a five-seater saloon and dimensions. They have the same wheelbase, but technically they are twin brothers. Anthera has almost the same range of engines, 2.4 liter gasoline, 140 horsepower, and a 3.2 liter V6, 227 horsepower, but two turbo diesels, 2.0 liter, 127 and 150 horsepower. Despite the Chevrolet emblem, this is a Korean-made car, Diwoo has been part of GM for about 10 years, and Captiva was created by engineers from the land of Morning Calm. Its main competitors are compact crossovers from Hyundai and Kia. Only Chevrolet is noticeably larger than its compatriots, probably because it is available in both 5- and 7-seater versions, and only in a 5-door body. The car was delivered to Russia exclusively with an all-wheel drive transmission although versions with front-wheel drive only are also sold in Europe. At first, we had only two engines, and both were gasoline, 2.4, 136 horsepower, and V6 3.2 liters, 230 horsepower. Buyers from the old world could also choose a modification with the latest 2.0-liter turbo diesel, 150 horsepower. Four-cylinder engines were standard equipped with a five-speed manual transmission, and a five-band automatic was offered for a surcharge. The flagship V6 is paired exclusively with an automatic transmission. Chevrolet Captiva does not shine with polished handling, and the cabin is not as spacious as you would expect. The rather heavy crossover clearly lacks the base gasoline quartet. A V6 turned out to be voracious and not as high torque as we would like. However, the car has no obvious failures either. As an inexpensive, moderately maintained family horse, it fits perfectly. As for the equipment, the standard Captiva is equipped with four airbags, ABS and ESP systems, air conditioning, heated mirrors, a CD radio and parking sensors. The LT version additionally provides climate control instead of air conditioning, light and rain sensors. Moreover, for the third row of seats, automatic transmission, leather interior, CD changer and 18-inch wheels, you have to pay extra separately. The most sought after 2.4L, 136 horsepower engine is sensitive to fuel quality. If it is bad, spark plugs, throttle position sensors and mass air flow sensors quickly fail. The electrician of the motor is junk, the generator will give up by 50,000 kilometers. Around this run, the starter nickels burn out. Often, the engine loses oil due to a banal leak of the oil pan, gaskets are not provided, the pan is planted on the sealant. More modern engine, V6. Its head and cylinder block are cast from aluminum alloy. This engine is noticeably more expensive than the four in maintenance and repair, and also has a high fuel consumption. Many owners prefer to install gas balloon equipment, which pays for itself in two or three years. There are practically no complaints about mechanical gearboxes. Over time, the linkage of the lever may loosen, which is why the already not very clear gear changes become blurred. Automatics were rarely repaired, but if necessary, it was mainly a bunch with the gasoline V6. Fully independent suspension is not as strong as we would like. Thrust bearings wear out quickly. Shock absorbers are not so durable, and the rear ones end faster than the front ones. By about 50,000 kilometers, you will have to fork out for front wheel bearings. Slightly more release front. Against this background, the stabilizer struts are long livers. Engines. The most demanded engine is a petrol 2.4 liter, for. First of all, on a used Captiva 2.4i ask if the first owner changed the timing belt, the service life of which is regulated by 60,000 kilometers. If not, update it along with the cutscenes. At the same time, check the condition of the water pump, it stably withstands two timing belt replacements. On the V6, also carry out a complete computer diagnostics, the engine is much more expensive to operate than a 2.0 liter. In addition, he has an increased appetite for engine oil up to 150 G per 1,000 kilometers. Transmission. Gearboxes are durable, but in a full-drive transmission, the drive clutch is not so reliable, and the wheels quickly overheat during long slippage. 
a failed crosspiece changes along with the cardan. Suspension. In the front suspension, after 50,000 kilometers, you have to change the support bearings of the struts along with the shock absorbers, as well as the wheel bearings. Stabilizer struts can withstand up to 75,000 kilometers, and ball bearings, up to 100. In the rear suspension, the stabilizer struts and shock absorbers hold up to 80,000 kilometers. By 100,000 kilometers, wheel bearings can be changed twice. Body. Not bad protected from corrosion, but the paintwork is La 6 OE. Peel off chrome on the outer details of the decor. There are also problems with interior equipment, the airbag wiring is buggy, the air conditioning compressor fails, it's clutch jams.